following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. Welcome to our second session of the program of Mindfulness of Modern Days. Now, in the first session, we have Greg Jacobson, and today also we have him on the show today. And I think in the first session, we spoke about life and about loving yourself and about happiness and about happiness being relationships with other people. Greg, I'm excited to start our second uh, discussion as well. Uh, my question for you is now about life. What exactly do you think life is? In, in your words, because a lot of people, again, as we discussed in the first sec segment, it, they're miserable with life. How do we find happiness in life and how do we find a reason to live again? I love that question. The answer is taking responsibility. Become an active participant in your own life rather than just a casual observer. So many people let life happen to them and they think that they're a victim of life rather than being someone who's in charge of their life. You need to learn the skills. You have to have the responsibility to learn the skills and take the actions to get the results that you're looking for in life. What you focus on is what you get. If you focus on what's wrong with my life, why am I so sad, that's what you'll get more of. If you think of what are the blessings in my life? What are the amazing things that are gonna to happen to me today? Who am I gonna to meet today that's truly gonna change my life? What opportunities are gonna present themselves today? And if you focus on that, that will happen as well. So it's really what you focus on and the actions that you take and the things that you learn that determine the quality of your life. And another thing that you mentioned in our previous segment last week uh, was that you know, we should always look forward to something. For example, you gave the example of, you know, for example, go, going on a vacation. You might really want to go on a vacation right now, but you might not be able to afford it. But in five years' time, you, you might be able to. But right now, you might be not happy, but you're focusing on happiness in the future. What do you think that we should focus on? Being happy right now or being happy in the future? Happiness in the moment is the only real happiness that there is. There is no future happiness. Matter of fact, there is no future. There's only now. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, it's not tomorrow morning, it's right now, once again. In five years, when you get on the plane to take a vacation or you get in your car to take that vacation, it's today. So happiness is a right now concept. It doesn't exist outside of right now. So I hope that that clarifies things a bit. Now you can look forward to things and you can have the anticipation of joy in the future which gives you happiness right now. So if you're talking about a, a future event, let's say it's a vacation five years from now, you put it on your calendar, you have to put a calendar on your wall and you look at it every day and you write it a note that says, I'm going on vacation, hooray, and you're excited about it. You have five years to look up what restaurants you're going to go to, what tours you're going to go on, what you're excited about seeing, who you're going to be with, and you can visualize these things in your mind as if they're happening right now. Because when you take surveys of people who take vacations, being on vacation is last place in the time frame. So let me clarify. Number one part of going on vacation that has the greatest satisfaction and the greatest happiness is before you go on vacation. People are happiest about the time before and the excitement and anticipation of what they're gonna do, where they're gonna go, and how they're gonna feel. The second place is after vacation, when they're looking back on the memories that they had, the places that they ate, and the places that they stayed, and the last place, dead last, is the vacation itself. Because people are worried, oh, that restaurant doesn't have what I wanted. Uh, the weather, it rained today. Oh no, the weather wasn't perfect for me. Uh, I'm waiting for my family to get ready and they're, they're making me late and I'm concerned that we're gonna be late for our tour. Uh, where's all my paperwork at the airport? And the little stressful things that they go through at the moment, which don't mean anything in the long run, are very present in the moment. 
So that is the least satisfactory part. So when you're looking at positive anticipation, looking forward to something in the future, you get joy from that right now. Something I want to link with that question also now, when we talk about success, success also just like happiness, everyone might have a different view of success. Sure. For one person, it's achieving goals in life, becoming a businesswoman sure. or a businessman. Absolutely. But for some people, it might just, you know, spending time with your family, getting married, having kids and settling down. So success also means differently to sure. each and every person in life. But when thinking about achieving goals, you're thinking about, okay, I must achieve this goal in during five years' time, six years' time, I'm going to be in this position. But in order to get there, there are some sacrifices you have to make now, which might not make you happy at the moment, but you still got to do it in order to be, to achieve those goals in the future. Sure, sure. So how do you get through that? Now you said being happy right now is most important, but there are certain things that you have to go through in life in order to achieve that in the future. Uh, again, I want to clarify, it's not about just being happy. Happy is for sure a goal that you take with you as you achieve. So it's not really just happy, it's happily achieving. When you're achieving the goals and results that you're looking for, of course you're going to have to make, you call them sacrifices, I call it an investment. That's all it is, it's just an investment. And the three questions in order to decide whether a goal or uh, let's call it a goal is worth it is, is the first thing is what do I want? What am I trying to achieve? Let's look at the end goal. What am I trying to achieve in the future? What's my long-term goal? The second thing is what is the investment? What am I gonna have to do to get, to get that result that I'm looking for? What, what's it gonna cost me in time? What's it gonna cost me in money, in effort? And even sacrifice, what can't I do in order to achieve that goal? And then the third part, is it, is it worth it? You have to ask those three questions. Now, if you aren't clear on what you want, you won't get it. If you're not clear on the investment, you probably won't get it. And if it's not worth it, you're not even gonna make the effort. So let's say that someone says, uh, this is a big problem in the world, for, especially for women, is I'm gonna, I need to lose weight because the world says I'm fat or I look in the mirror and I think I'm fat or I need to lose some weight. Maybe it's just a few pounds. And they, they have this goal that I'm gonna lose weight. That's it, that's, that's their goal. Well, that's not specific enough. In order to be clear on your goals, what is that gonna cost me? So first of all, how much weight do I wanna lose? I wanna lose five kilos. Okay, great. What is the time frame in order that I'm gonna lose these? Okay, I, I've got a wedding, my cousin's wedding's coming up, I wanna look great for the pictures in the wedding, and so it's three months from now. So you know that now it's measurable. You have to lose, or you would like to lose, five kilos, in three months. Now what is what else is the investment? What is the cost? What do I have to either do or stop doing? Well, I need to exercise more maybe. And I need to maybe stop eating ice cream and chips. And then you have to ask, is it worth it? Do I really need to lose five kilos in order to look good for those pictures or would I rather go out to dinner and have fried foods and have ice cream and have chips and, and be uh, comfortable sitting on my couch watching Netflix or whatever you watch on TV and not have taken the actions in order to achieve those goals. Now, if you're not willing to do those things, if, if it's more important for you to have ice cream, by all means have ice cream. There's nothing wrong with that. And because you think you're five kilos overweight doesn't necessarily mean that you're five kilos overweight. It's just something that you have in your head that other people measure you by or you measure yourself by and say, I'm not good enough because I have this extra weight on me. Even if it's extra, if it is extra. You know, Oprah Winfrey, I'm sure most people watching know who Oprah is. They say, Oprah has a weight issue. She has a challenge with her weight. No, she doesn't. She's supposed to be a big woman. That's how, that's normal for her. She doesn't keep eating and become bigger and bigger and bigger. She has a normal set point. And for her to be thin and skinny is not natural for her. 
It's just not. It's not a comfortable place for her to be or she would be there. So why not just be comfortable with who you are and how you are and enjoy life just the way it is? I'm not saying grow and grow and grow and become bigger and bigger, but if that's, if that's important for you, if, that, if you like that, that's okay too. I'm saying be your own advocate. Stop beating yourself up over what you don't have or, uh, or the situation that you're in that you may think is negative because it may just be okay the way it is right now. And so many people are looking at what they don't have rather than focusing on what they do have. That's the challenge, is when you're happy with yourself and what's going on in your life, when you count your blessings, when you say, I really want a yacht, I want to be a multimillionaire, that's so important to me. Is it really important to you? How important is that? Why, why can't you just be happy with, I've got a job where I like the people that I work with, I'm paying my bills, I love my apartment, I love my stuff, I've got a decent car, it runs every day, I thank God that my family's healthy, or I thank the universe that my family's healthy if you don't believe in God. I don't want people to get hung up on the words. I want them to feel a certain way. What will it take for you to feel that? And that's the direction that you want to go. Right, Greg. I want to really continue this discussion. But before that, let's go into a short commercial break. You're watching the program of Mindfulness of Modern Days. We'll be back soon. Welcome back to Mindfulness of Modern Days and we are in discussion with Greg Jacobson and again Greg thank you for taking the time to join me on the show and before the break we were talking about you know feeling happy right now and in the future would you describe being happy also is relevant to being at peace is it the same thing I don't think it's quite the same thing, but it's certainly part of being happy. You want to be at peace. I think that's, that's one of the goals of being happy. Happy has a lot, of, a lot of pieces to it. And if that's important to you, then I, I suggest that you take the steps to, to feel that. And also you mentioned now, for example, you gave the example of, you know, being pretty at a friend's occasion or something like that and you feel you want to lose weight and then there are little things that you have to invest in yourself in order to cut down that weight. You'll have to stop eating ice cream or whatsoever. But what if you decide, yeah, no, I'd rather eat ice cream anyway and be big anyway. But what if it's affecting your health? Would you still advise them to do that? I, I recommend doing things in moderation. I don't think you should sit down and eat a tub or two of ice cream, but if your health says you shouldn't eat ice cream, I don't think that there's something wrong with taking a spoonful of ice cream and enjoying it without beating yourself up saying I shouldn't have done that. If you like donuts, go to the donut store once a week or whatever you like, have a bite of donut and throw it away. It's not wasteful to enjoy a moment of that. But if you're at the donut shop and you can't stop yourself and you have six donuts, that's not healthy. And so I think everything in moderation. My question is, how do you not sabotage your own happiness, not knowing that, okay, this is going to affect you in the long run? Because right now, this must be making you happy. And, but in the long run, it might really affect you. How do you Give me an strike example. the Give me an example. balance in Give that? Give me an example of that. Okay, for example, in culture. Okay or in relationships we have with people. I'm trying to structure the question properly. You have a relationship with your parents, with your family, okay. or your husband or your wife. But in order to deal with a problem right now, there are so many things that will affect them. Specific decisions that you have to make will affect them sure. as well. But you know that this is not exactly what you want, but then for the betterment of everyone else, you're sticking to stay with that and move on with life. Is that the right thing to do? That's, a, that's really a tough balance and a tough question, especially culturally, you know, especially here in, in Sri Lanka. I think that you need to do what's best for you and you need to take others into consideration. However, 
your parents want you to be a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer and your love and passion is music, I think that you should take the, the path that's best for you. You have to live to please yourself without the detriment and pain to others. I think communication is truly the answer. Now it's different with, with parents than it is with a spouse. A spouse you have committed to them to be a team. And I think that even with children, they join your team. You don't have to do whatever your kids want because it's easier. I think that that is also an issue that, that keeps coming up. When a kid decides they're going to throw a temper tantrum and they start screaming and crying and doing whatever they do, I don't think it's in your best interest, your spouse's best interest, the public's best interest, or your child's best interest to just give in to that. They're running a play to try to see if they can get the result that they want. And they don't understand that there's consequences outside of them. That's how children behave. You need to be a strong individual and say, listen, my suggestion is, anyway, I'm not telling anyone what to do, I'm just giving suggestions here. You don't say, if you're good for a little bit, I'll take you and buy you a toy, or shove a cookie in their mouth, or do something just to appease the moment. I think you need to look at overall, what can I do to do my best as a parent to raise children that are ready for the world? When I'm not here, how will they be able to live? If you don't teach your kids that behaving well is the, the proper way to do it, and if you throw a tantrum, you're not gonna get cookies. You're not gonna get a toy. It's when, you, when you're good the majority of the time, that's when you get it. You don't use it as a tool for them to stop acting poorly. That is a, I find that as a, as a, a real issue around the world. It used to be different. Parents used to discipline their kids in many different ways. Some I certainly don't agree with and some I do. Uh, that's a personal parenting choice. But in order to, to have responsible, raise responsible children into adulthood, there has to be parameters, there has to be guidelines that they need to follow. There's things that they need to do. They need to rinse off their dish. They need to help with the cleaning. They need to be part of the family structure. Because they joined you, I think so many people have the, the, the idea that, oh, we had these kids, so we have to do everything we can to please them. And really, your responsibility as a parent is to prepare them for adulthood in the best way possible. Because so many kids now growing up are not ready for the world and when they find out that the world doesn't love them as much as their parents and their parents gave them everything, the world doesn't give you anything. So if you're not prepared for that, you're going to have a very difficult time getting up to speed and saying, why didn't my parents pre prepare me for this? I think you're doing them a disservice by not disciplining them and not teaching them and not having them to be part of the responsibilities around the house as well. To make yourself happy in a bubble where it's just about me and I don't care about people around me because my happiness is the most important, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying take all of it into consideration because your family's part of your happiness, your friends are part of your happiness, your kids are part of your happiness, but really you need to make the decisions that resonate with you that are best for you. If your parents are pushing you to be an accountant, an accountant, an accountant, an accountant, but you'll make money, you'll, you'll always have business, I, that, that's how I take care of you is by telling you to do this. And in your heart, you don't like numbers. It's not something that's gonna bring you joy or fulfillment in any way. You have to temper that and say, listen, sit down with your parents and say, listen, I love you, I respect you, and I trust your judgment. However, this is not the path for me. We need to sit, maybe sit down together and figure out a path that you'll be happy with me as a person. I don't want you unhappy with me, but I have to be happy with me because every day I go home and I look in the mirror. When I go to sleep at night, I'm really alone. 
Even if you have someone sleeping next to you, you're still alone in this. So I think communication is one of the, the important keys that is missing. I, I think that people don't say Definitely. what's on their mind. They just, they just try to please other people and then they, they, exactly. they don't have it. And, and in the United States, it's and probably around the world, it's a lot of pressure from your parents to get into really top schools. And there, it starts from when you're really young. And there's pressure and pressure and more homework and extracurricular activities. And these kids are just a, basically a victim of their parents wanting them to be successful and on such a high level that they take on so much pressure that they're really, they come to the breaking point a lot of the time. So even kids that sometimes they don't get into school and they, they fall apart. They'll get into drugs or suicidal thoughts or even suicidal actions. Or sometimes they get into the schools, but they were so bright in their high school, now they go to this high level university and they're just the same as everybody else. They're not, they're not the smartest person anymore. Or as an athlete, they're not the best athlete anymore. They're among the best athletes of the world that now come here and the pressure's really on them to maintain or sustain their their position, and they, again, drugs, alcohol, uh, depression, suicide, and I think also that people don't want to talk about suicide. They see someone that's depressed and they don't want to talk about it because they think maybe if they bring it up that they'll be the reason. They'll say, oh, are you depressed or have you, are you having suicidal thoughts or any discussion of that is going to bring these people into that thought pattern as if they, had, they didn't have that thought before. Suicide doesn't happen when you talk about it. It happens when you don't talk about it. So it's really a discussion that should be uh, prevalent because here in Sri Lanka, 10 people take their lives every day in this small island. 10 people a day kill themselves. And worldwide, it's about 800,000 people a year commit suicide and 20 times more than that attempt it. So only one in, five, uh, one in 20 people who attempt suicide actually die. So there's a lot of sadness, and I think it's because people aren't taking the actions and having the focus on what will, will make them happy, then learning those things and taking action in those things. I think that people should do what they like in life, what they're good at. You're usually good at things that you like. If you're not good at it, you can learn it, but if you don't like to do it, why would you continue to do it? Unless it's mission critical, and it, and it normally isn't. So my suggestion for people is to do what you like, and don't just become good at it, become outstanding at it. Be phenomenal at whatever it is that you like that you're good at, because that's where the money is. If you want to be successful in financial terms, you have to be outstanding. That's really the important thing. Greg and now we've come to the end of our second wow. session as well yes time flew and we will be again meeting next week again for the third session okay. uh, I'll be waiting for that as well I'm pretty sure the audience will also be waiting to have the next discussion as well and thank you again for joining me on this week as well nice Hope next time we'll next take week. some specific time for strategies that you can put into action you put in you can put into action and really improve your life immediately. That's important to me. All right. Thank you again, Greg. Thank and that you. was our second episode on mindfulness of modern days. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Join us again next week at the same time. Just in case you couldn't catch us on air, you can always catch us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Have a good night.